So I can say that L operator is a self adjoint operator or is a Hermitian is a Hermitian operator. L is a Hermitian operator and we know that there are some properties associated with an operator when it becomes a Hermitian operator. When L is a Hermitian operator, then it will have real eigenvalues. A Hermitian operator will always have real eigenvalues and the eigenvalue associated with this Hermitian operator are L into L plus 1 and the second one, the second property which is associated with a Hermitian operator is that the eigenfunctions, the eigenfunctions associated with different with different eigenvalues with different eigenvalues will be orthonormal must B alpha normal. Like we are having eigenfunctions, eigenfunctions such that those eigenfunctions correspond to different eigenvalues, their eigenvalues are different, then those eigenfunctions must be orthogonal to each other and those eigenfunction must be normalized. So these are the two properties which are associated with an operator which is a Hermitian operator. So we can say that the Legendre polynomial which is PL of X is actually the nth eigenfunction. This PL of X is the nth eigenfunction nth eigenfunction of the operator which is L. So we are having this is the eigenfunction, the nth eigenfunction of operator L and these function, the all the functions which are in all this means 1, 2, 3 up to Lth, all those functions will actually form a complete set of states or bases which will be defined in the range from minus 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to plus 1 is these eigenfunction will be the orthonormal basis like the unit vectors in Cartesian coordinates so we will have we can expand any function in these polynomials so any function we will uh, is we expand any vector in the form of unit vectors so in the form of these polynomials we can expand any function here so the orthogonality condition we will have to now prove that any of the two polynomials will be orthogonal to each other and we will have to normalize them as well. So the very first one that we are going to do, the orthonormality condition, I know that this is from minus 1 to plus 1, dx, p, l of x, and 
Then another polynomial, if I take with this, let me call that L prime of x and dx, and this will be equal to means L is not the same as this, so we will have 0 here. We write this in terms of the chronicle delta is delta L L prime and this is equal to 0 if L is not equal to L prime means they are orthogonal and this is equal to 1 only in the case when L will be equal to L prime and this is the situation when we will have the normalization of this. So this is orthonormality condition. Orthogonality is when is normalized. So we will have this is the orthogonality condition and we can prove this one as well. And let me start to prove this one that these polynomials are actually orthogonal to each other. So let's start from here. So when these two will be orthogonal, then this will be equal to zero. While for the normalization, as we did here, that we took p naught of x means the very first one is one or p naught of cos theta equal to one. But what is actually the normalization constant here uh, means how we can make this thing equal to 1. So we will normalize these polynomials. And to normalize these polynomials, let me write, let me start with this. That from minus 1 is PL of x. I know that this is equal to 1 over 2L L factorial and the L derivative of x square minus 1 to the power L. So let's take two polynomials here and they are for example P. Now is this is the orthonormality condition. The two polynomials if they are equal to 0 when integrated then we will have those perpendicular to each other and when they are equal to 1 they will be normalized. So here if I look to the polynomials then the first polynomial we have taken is 1 but we haven't yet found the normalization constant. So is we normally do in quantum mechanics psi mod square is equal to 1 and that is the normalization condition. So we are taking the two polynomials like two wave functions are uh, one wave function mod squared. So we squared this one and then I write the PL of x value from here. So the PL of x value is here and it is squared, simple squared because it is not containing any complex part. If we do integrate this L times, then we will get one more two factorial. Take this one out of this is a constant, and the sign will change for every value of L. So minus one. If L will be even, we will have positive. If L will be odd, we will have the minus sign here, and then dx x square minus 1 to the power L and this will become d2L divided by dx power 2L and x square minus 1. So this we got is the and the power of this will also be 2L. So we will have the is we have one L here, so here we will have only L and this will be D2L. So this is the integration, this is the integration L times will get us this thing. Now the we know one fact and the fact is that the 2L times derivative 
of here. This is also 2n because x power is 2ml here. So x is having power 2n. Now when the number of derivatives become equal to the number of power of the variable, then it will always give us a constant. I can check this one is that for example d over dx of x. So here it is having power 1 and here power 1 so this is equal to 1. Similarly d square over dx square of x square will be equal. When I will derivate this once then it will become 2x. When I will derivate it twice it will become 2. So 1 is a constant, 2 is a constant. Similarly d cube over dx cube of x cube then the very first derivative will give 3x square and then we will have the next derivative so it will become 6x and then 6 so we will get 6 over here so when the number the power of derivative is equal to the power of the variable then it will always give us a constant. So we can determine this constant is d2l over dx2l and x squared minus 1 power l then this will be equal because this is just a constant and when derivative will operate on this one then it will give 0 so we can write the d over dx to the power 2l and x to the power 2l this will give us here powers are equal so 1 here 2 and 1 means I can write this is 2, 2 into 1. Here this one I can write is 3 into 2 into 1. So it means that this one is like 1 factorial, this is then 2 factorial, this is then 3 factorial, it means it is the power factorial. So I can write that this will be 2L factorial. So we will have this expression is because I operated this one and I came to know that this will just give me the 2L factorial so I can take this thing out and I can write the PL and PL is equal to 1 over 2L L factorial squared minus 1 to the power L and then this will be 2L whole factorial and then integration from minus 1 to plus 1 and dx x square minus 1 to the power L. So this way we have simplified our integral and if I do continue this way, so 2n factorial and then I can write it in a simplified form that this is equal to 1 over 2l l factorial, this l is in bar, 4 squared now look here x square minus 1 if this will be even then this whole is positive while this will become positive and when n will be odd and if I change this 1 minus x square then minus will come out and here l is or so minus will come out. So both the minus will cancel in case of this is L is odd. 
y when n will be even then plus will be here and plus will be here so i will have for both n is odd or even i can skip this one and then i will write this as 1 minus x square so this is 2l factorial and from minus 1 to plus 1 dx and 1 minus x square to the power l so this way i can get rid of this minus 1 to the power l because for even this is positive and 1 minus x square when it is even then changing this one will not generate minus sign when this is odd it is odd minus sign will be generated here and changing this one 1 minus x square will also cause 1 minus here so both minus will cancel and now we are ready to solve our integral and all integral is sort of an easy integral so let's suppose that x is equal to cos theta we just substitute this one then what about dx dx will be equal to minus sin theta d theta and what about the limits when x is minus 1 then this cos will be equal to pi and when x will be plus 1 then cos will be equal to 0 so our limits our limits are from minus 1 to plus 1 so it will be from pi to 0 in case of the substitution so i can write that the integral